Bright Suns, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my review for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, the newest attraction to open at Disney's Hollywood Studios today, December 5th, 2019. Now, I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review. I will be talking spoilers, I will be discussing a lot of elements about the ride and, you know, what I liked, what I disliked, what I think could be improved, things like that. I'm going to be getting into the nitty gritty of this attraction, so if you don't want to be spoiled, if you don't want to see what's inside the attraction, if you don't want to hear about what's in the inside of the attraction, click away now because I am going to be discussing all that. I will give you guys a second. Okay, so... Uh, Rise of the Resistance, uh, as you guys saw in the in the video from today, is the most unique attraction that I have ever ridden, and that's 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 saying something because I've traveled the world and I've been to other attractions, and there are some unique attractions out there. This one is definitely by far the most unique attraction that I have ever ridden. Now, going into today, I was extremely worried for this attraction because I had heard a bunch of different things how, you know, as to why the attraction was delayed. The attraction didn't open with a land, which is uh, very, very unfortunate. And, you know, I had been hearing all these things online about stuff that's possibly wrong with the attraction, things that are being changed, and, you know, all these different rumors flying around about the attraction. That just had me really worried, quite frankly, about the fate of the attraction and what it is and what, what happens on the ride. And it had me extremely worried. So I came in today with high hopes but also minimal expectations because if you know in my mind if I lower my expectations then I won't be as disappointed the plus side of that though is that if I have my expectations lowered it'll be even like it'll be even easier to exceed my expectations and the more I'll be entertained and guys <laughs> um, this ride is a lot of fun it is quite frankly one of the best, if not the best ride I have ever ridden in my life and quite possibly my new all-time favorite attraction at Walt Disney World and maybe all-time favorite attraction ever. This was such a fun ride and again, I had my doubts going into it. I didn't think that I was going to enjoy the ride as much as I did. Like, I had read the rumors online, I knew what some parts of the ride was or what some parts of the ride entailed, but Everything blew me out of the water. Now, before I go any further, I am going to show you guys a little, uh, some, I'm going to show you guys some clips that I took from today of going through the queue, some of the pre-show, some of the, the, the resistance transport ship before you get into the hangar, show you guys some of that, and we'll get back to you guys. Okay, so the part that I need to talk about right now is the reveal for the Imperial or the First Order hangar that you that you get into. So you're on Batu and you get into this resistance transport ship, you fly off, and then you get captured by the First Order. You get caught in a tractor beam, you're put into the hangar, and when that door opens, and you see all the stormtroopers standing there staring at you and you have the first order officer come in and he's like we are going to interrogate you we will break you there is no escape right this way 
and you know they're all they're all serious since the cast members do such a great job at role playing and really taking on that role of being in the first order and being evil and mean and just not caring about you at all they do such a great job and i want to applaud all the cast members for for their role playing in this attraction this attraction would not work if the cast members didn't love what they did and didn't role play the way that they did this attraction would not work the immersion would be gone and the whole effect would be dead if the cast members didn't do what they did so all the cast members that that i saw today phenomenal job phenomenal job i absolutely loved everything that you guys did today now uh i i i i have to be honest this is something that i definitely was not expecting to happen when those doors opened and i walked into that hangar and i got to look around and see the scale of that hangar like i had seen pictures before i had seen some videos of this hangar over the last few days and I have to say, the pictures and the video do not do that hangar justice as far as scale. And the the overall plot and story of this attraction leading up to you getting captured was done so well. It was told in such a way that really made me personally feel like I left Batu, I left wherever we were on Earth, and we were in space, we were in Star Wars, we were there living the movie. And all that leading up to that big reveal, I cried. I am not afraid to admit that I legitimately teared up and started to cry a little when I saw that hangar and I walked out in there and I was looking around at the scale and that big massive wall where you can see out into space. There was just nothing like it. You felt like you were in Star Wars. You were in a First Order Starship hangar. And that was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had in the Disney Park. Never have I ever felt that way in a Disney Park before or in any other attraction. And that says something. That is, that is... I've, I've never felt that way before. I was instantly transported back to being a child and watching the original trilogy, Star Wars, falling in love with everything that those, that those, you know, movies had to offer. And, you know, being a nerd with my dad about, you know, Star Wars, because he absolutely loves Star Wars as well. He taught me everything I knew about Star Wars. And I was instantly transported back to a kid and, like, as a kid, you wanted that universe to be real. You wanted to live that, that adventure. And Disney did a damn good job at recreating everything that you see from the movies. And being all the details down to a T, Disney did absolutely right. And I can't, I, I, I honestly couldn't believe that I, that I teared up. Take a look. I'm literally, this is cool. I literally started crying. Like we got off that ship and I literally started crying. That's how awesome that was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge nerd for that stuff and it, that was incredible. It was pretty cool. That was incredible. I know, right? The reveal, the reveal walking off of that ship and that whole setup was absolutely phenomenal and that was so cool so yeah that was that, that was my reaction to to seeing the hangar and it was it was honestly quite something um so from there you are led into this into this tunnel where you kind of split up and then you do a couple turns and that is where you are you know grouped into into your into your ride vehicles like that like this is where you're gonna be your, your groups for your ride vehicles and it's really weird and this whole this whole process is is interesting and it's also kind of confusing and, and, and let, let me tell you why because they grouped us and there's you know two sides that you can go to you know you walk in you can either go straight forward or you can make a right and you can be in that little hallway down there you walk in you see two stormtroopers that are I'm 99% sure that are animatronic they're standing there you know they're kind of looking around and you know just keeping an eye on things and all the cast members that are there you know they are first order cast members and you know they're playing their jobs super well and they group you by color 
So they tell you to stand on a color, you know, it's four people per color, and that is going to correspond to the row that you sit in. So they tell you to remember the color that you're on, and I was the color red, so I was standing on red, and they said, you know, just remember that color. And then, you know, you, you move into the interrogation room. You, they, they send you in. And this was really, really cool what they did because, you know, I, I had heard that there was an interrogation room, so I was, I was expecting it. So we walk into the interrogation room, and it is a very, fairly small room. I mean, it's kind of, it's like a medium-sized room to fit, you know, enough people in there. But it's a, it's a dead-end room. It is literally a prison cell that you are in. And there's, you know, the three walls and then the door that you just walked into. You look up, you see Kylo Ren, you see Hux, and they're talking, they're talking to you. And, you know, Kylo Ren almost begins his interrogation. And the way that they simulate Kylo Ren using his Force powers on you to try and, like, read your mind, I guess. Almost like what he did with Rey and um, what he attempted to do to Rey. And what he did to Poe Dameron in the, in the first movie, um, what was it, The Force Awakens. Where he, you know, played with his mind a little bit to get what the answer that he needed. The way that they did that effect really almost made you feel like it was he was playing with your mind. It was it was really weird what they did with with the bass and the sound it, and the and the lighting. Everything just helped to play that. And so he walks away, and you're kind of left alone in this room with just the three walls and the door that you walked into. And so then you know you start hearing this noise next to you, and it. Have you ever, in, do you remember in The Phantom Menace when Qui-Gon stabs the door and he's kind of like melting it through? So they they kind of do something like that where it looks like they are cutting through the wall next to you and you, you, you see the flames, you see the sparks and they're coming down, forming up and then the wall pulls open and shifts to the side. And you have two other cast members who are members of the Resistance run in there and like, Hey guys, we're with the Resistance. We gotta go now. We're here to rescue you. Come on, let's go, let's go. And so they are there to rescue you and your ride vehicles are right there. Your troop transport vehicles are right there waiting for you. Now, the issue with the colors is that almost everyone that I was with forgot what color they were assigned. And we got in there. And, you know, the cast members are doing their best to play their role and be like, come on, guys, we got to go. You know, we're, we're here to rescue you. You got to you got to get in, you know, buckle up and do whatever. And there were people there that were with me that were like. And and, and it's and, and, and it's not immediately clear where you're supposed to go, because the ride vehicles have a little light on the side that is either I think it was red, blue and silver and um, white or something like that. It was it was one of the two. I know my car was red and blue. And so there's a little light on, on, on the vehicle that's, you know, blue or red and that corresponds to the row that you the row that you sit in. And so, you know, I went to my row, but there were a couple of guys who were trying to figure out, you know, trying to remember where exactly they were sitting. So we were there for a couple minutes exactly trying to figure out exactly where where they were going. So I think that that needs to be improved on a little bit because that that transition between where you're assigned and when you get into the vehicle, it's a little too long and I honestly completely forgot for a second. I was like, oh shit, what color am I? Like, like, where did they assign me again? And I remembered it was red, but um, if, if I was forgetting, you know, in that immediate moment, other people are going to forget too. And I'm sure that happens throughout the day. So I'm sure they're going to improve that. But if not, please, Disney, improve that because that is just going to be a huge cluster right there. You need to improve on that some in some capacity like put numbers on the floor or or something that that needs to be improved a little bit now with how much high praise I am giving this attraction it is not without its faults uh, this ride is not perfect in any way but it's also a really damn good ride like the like everything that I have to complain about is just little nitpicks little nitpicks little little details that I would change and this ride would be you know 10 out of 10 best ride ever yeah I mean it automatically I mean it kind of is already it's like a 9 out of 10 definitely the best ride that I've ever been on but little nitpicks here and there that I would personally change that I hope Disney might take a look at well We'll set it off right. So we get in our uh, troop transport vehicles. We launch out, and it's a trackless ride vehicle. So there's 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 no track on the floor. Your your two individual vehicles dancing around each other for a little bit before you move into a hallway and you run into an Imperial Pro Droid. And it doesn't it, it doesn't spot you immediately. You know the Mon Calamari commander 
that he's like, you know, thank God it didn't spot you. Let's let's continue on. Move to one of the move to one of the elevators so we can get you down to uh, one of the one of the escape pods because you're you're ultimately trying to get to an escape pod to escape. So you get stopped by two stormtroopers who are up on the balcony and they are screens. There, this ride has a perfect mix of screens and animatronics, and it does everything really really well. It's just the right balance of of both to m not make it super corny but also make it super entertaining and super realistic as well and by no means do the stormtroopers on the screen look bad in any way they were pretty three-dimensional in the screen and you don't need glasses for this ride at all there's quite a few screens on this ride but you don't need glasses which is a great a great addition if this ride would suffer a lot more if it was in 3d but thank god it is it is this attraction is not in 3d so they have that going for them so after you you, you see those stormtroopers they start blasting and this is another thing that I wanted to mention as well so in all the promotional videos and images that you saw for this attraction you see the stormtroopers blasting and you see you know physical blasts going all around you and correct me if I'm wrong but I could have swore I saw somewhere where Disney was boasting about how they had this new technology to simulate blaster fire going all around you and maybe they did maybe they didn't feel free to correct me down in the comment section if I'm wrong I remember seeing that somewhere and I was kind of disappointed with how they did the blaster fire because it was like yeah they had like projections on different objects to simulate, you know, blasts, blasters hitting those objects and it left scorch marks and everything and they had lighting above that that simulated the blaster fire. But the blaster fire was just kind of disappointing. Didn't I, I didn't really believe that, you know, there were blasters, that, that there were, you know, lasers flying everywhere and, you know, near, m nearly missing me. So that's, that's a little nitpick right there. From there, you move into the Big Daddy room, the the room that you've seen in a lot of promotional images, the room with the giant at at -AT walkers, the AT-ATs, and my god, those things are massive. They are huge. You look up at them and you're like, oh my god, these things are freaking massive. Now, this image right here that I'm putting on screen is an image that has been circulated a lot. Disney put out this image and this is how they have been helping to promote the ride. It's showing the Atwalkers looking down at you and, and in other videos and promotional videos, they've shown them shooting down at you. This does not happen. These Atwalkers are 100% stationary. They do not move. Their heads do not move. And I kind of figured that as well because as this uh, attraction was being constructed and built, you could see the metal frame for the Atwalkers and there was no way for the head to articulate. Like the head could not be moved in the in the way that it was being built. And you you could tell just by the just by the skeleton of the structure that it was not going to happen. So I had my doubts about that already. So I wasn't 100% disappointed. But in all the promotional images that Disney had, those heads articulated down to look at you, and they were they were shooting down at you. That was pretty disappointing. But you continue on in that room. You have other stormtroopers that show up in screens, and there's blaster fire. And again, they're simulating the lasers hitting different objects around you with some projection. Then you back up, and now this is where the attraction gets different and unique between the two vehicles. One vehicle moves to the side of the Outwalkers. The other vehicle moves like almost in front of the Outwalker. That was the one we were in and I'm gonna have some video playing over this as well you before you lift up you get a look at an animatronic of Finn and uh, uh, I like that they added the animatronic I wasn't expecting the animatronic nowhere did I expect to see a Finn animatronic and I like that they had him there it was cool that they had him there but my god he he, oh, he looked nothing like Finn I mean he was a darker skin tone yeah but the face the face it was it was really weird and the way his mouth moved it uh, I I didn't like that they they definitely need to improve on that fix the face fix his movements or something that just looked really really weird it was cool it was really cool to see and it helped to see a physical character there actually you know shooting back at the stormtroopers but it, it just looked a little weird so anyways from there we lift up unexpected I wasn't expecting this we lift up 
to to eye level of one of the Outwalkers, and you can see two stormtroopers in the Outwalkers, like, hey, look, you know, the prisoners are right there, and you see one of the stormtroopers hit the button, and the two lasers on the side of the Outwalkers point down, and you can hear me say in the video, oh, Jesus, because this is going to be really, really cool, so those two lasers go down, and they're ready to shoot at you, you turn around, you hear those blasters, you feel the floor vibrating, because those are some big boy blasters, those are thick boy blasters, and you can see them, like, they have lights on the ceiling to simulate the big thick lasers flying above you and hitting the scorch marks on the wall that was really cool I really enjoyed that part so following that you turn a corner and you are in the, the bridge of the ship and you look up and you see an animatronic Kylo Ren and an animatronic Hux. Kylo Ren looked fine in this in, in this scene and his movements were okay. Hux his face was all kinds of jacked up. He, he, he looked a little, he looked a little in, in, in the face for the animatronic. And 100% clear that he was a robot. His, his movements were very, were very, were very static and not fluid like, like I would expect. Like, I was hoping to look up and like almost believe that there was a person there. Kylo Ren, on the other hand, his movements were very good, very fluid, and the way he moves, very, very believable, and I really liked that. And, of course, the screens that you see into the outside of the, of, you know, in, in, into space and all the, all the, um, the resistance ships coming out of hyperspace and starting their attack, absolutely spot on. So you move back and you get sent into a, into an elevator I'm, I'm assuming and you see Kylo Ren jump down and it's a mix of screen and physical I think because you know you, you only get a quick glance at it but Kylo Ren himself is in a screen walking towards you but the lightsaber that he has I think that's physical and they and they play that really well because he's obviously behind a screen and he's walking towards you but I think the lightsaber that he has in his hand is an actual physical lightsaber that is just on on an arm or something that's moving towards you and it looked so realistic it looked really really good I liked what they did with that so the doors close and you start moving down on the elevator and then you've seen this in promotional images too you see the lightsaber stab through the roof of the of the elevator and start circling through like he's cutting a circle so that he can jump down that effect was really, really cool. The lightsaber itself looked meh. It looked like a standard cliche, just red beam coming down. And it looked like any your average lightsaber. It didn't look like Kylo Ren's lightsaber where you know the blade is kind of meh, 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 meh <laughs> for lack of better words. Like, it's not a perfect lightsaber. He, he made it himself and it's not perfect so it's got all the little lines and waves on it so it's not a perfect lightsaber it didn't look like that it looked a little too perfect almost like it was Darth Vader's lightsaber perfectly coming through but the way that they did his lightsaber cutting through the ceiling looked really really cool and I had no idea how they did that I'm still trying to figure out how they did that I mean I have a couple of ideas but my god that looks really really awesome and so you move out of there and from there you move into this this hallway and I, I've seen pictures of this but I had no idea that this was going to be the the thing that it was the, the room with the massive cannons that are blasting out into space now we've seen cannons like this before in the prequel trilogy when you are in the in the um clone starships d during the clone wars and you would see these massive cannons that you know fire and they, they move backwards a little bit and then they reload and they fire and move backwards a little bit we hadn't seen anything like that in the original trilogy i think we might have seen something like that in the in the sequel trilogy not entirely sure but to be there in those massive cannons and you can feel the base the floor is vibrating everything is vibrating around you you can feel the power of those cannons as they're blasting out into space and you know fighting off the resistance and all the gunships and, and the, the, the fighters that are outside and the music and everything this this hallway scene was absolutely fantastic it was done super well I have no complaints about that room whatsoever moving on to the next scene you turn a corner and you're you know Finn's like okay abandon ship everyone get out now so you're at this point you're trying to find your escape pods and you're met with Kylo Ren again he is an animatronic this, I had the biggest issue with this animatronic here. It was clear as day animatronic. His, his, his movements were not fluid and he was, he, 
he looked way too much like a robot in his movements. Like, I know he's putting his arms out and he's trying to, you know, use his force powers and the, the effects that they do with the vehicle is making it feel like, you know, he's got a hold of you is done really, really well. But the movement of Kylo Ren, and I'm going to, you know, put the video in here, just the way he looks, he looks a little too robotic in, in his movements. But other than that, it's like... After that, with the, with the Tie Fighter or one of the ships crashing in behind him and the walls, the walls behind him moving away, that was really cool. That effect of a, a hull breach in the ship and you know st stuff being sucked out into space, that was really cool. That was really well done. And from there, you enter your escape pods. And this is where it turns into a motion simulator. You know, both vehicles enter their own individual escape pods. And you see the other, it, it basically turns into almost like a 30 second Star Tours. Where you have the screen in front of you and you're on a little motion thing like this. But it's on a, on, it's on a whole different scale because you have to travel from the starship back to Batu, and you end up outside. So this is where the Tower of Terror-esque portion of the ride goes where you free fall, where you see the other um, escape pods detaching and they drop vertically in front of you, then it's your turn. You drop, you literally lift up out of your seat for a second and that is a vertical drop that you feel in your stomach and you free fall for just a second, like even if, if that, it's really quick that you detach and then you're off and you're in almost a Star Tours like ride where it does, it's not as intense as Star Tours but it vibrates, it moves you around a little bit and then just as quickly as it started you're back on Batuu, you're skidding through and you end up in the Rebel base and then you back up out of it and you are outside, like you are back on Batuu, you are physically outside in that in that little metallic tube thing that you can see uh, in, in Galaxy's Edge and that is the exit to the attraction. <sighs> wow. <laughs> There was a lot to go through in this attraction. I didn't even touch the the queue. The queue is a completely different and completely different animal. But honestly, I had my doubts going into this attraction, and you know, I I I knew going into it that I was more than likely gonna like it, and I had I I managed my expectations with things that were going on. And yes, uh, we got there, and the. And we had our, our our downtime at the beginning, and that was very unfortunate that we had that downtime in the beginning. It, it lasted about an hour, and to my knowledge, nothing else happened throughout the day. Um, excellent idea with Disney to do the boarding groups. Um, I They definitely wanted to avoid a Hagrid situation where people were waiting literally the entire day in a line and not being able to experience the rest of the park. Like, the boarding groups, like, you got into the park, you assigned yourself a boarding group, you can go and you can leave the park if you wanted to do whatever you wanted and when your boarding group is called you have a two-hour window to come back and do what you wanted fantastic idea I absolutely love it it's unfortunate that a lot of guests weren't able to experience the attraction if you came in after a certain time but over the next few days we will see how this uh, boarding group system plays out and see how they manage that and see how they can uh, increase the number of guests that get to experience this wonderful attraction per day but my God, guys, uh, you know, I had I, I had said on Twitter before, like, all the reviews that you are seeing for this ride uh, on the media day, these are media reviews. Like, Disney is telling them you have to say that this ride is beyond spectacular. And I said to manage your expectations, wait until opening day, and I told you guys that I would give you an honest review. I am not associated with Disney in any way. They did not pay me to say any of this. This is my own personal thoughts, my own honest review. This is a damn good ride. A, a, you know, an absolute minus the little nitpicks 10 out of 10 ride I absolutely love it go to Hollywood Studios go to Disney World ride this attraction when it opens in California ride this attraction it'll absolutely change your life videos are one thing being there in person to see it is an absolutely is it, it's it, it's a whole nother ball game and I recommend this ride to anybody that is able to ride this is a family attraction that absolutely anyone can enjoy and if you are a Star Wars fan I highly recommend you ride this attraction make time to ride it get to the park early get your boarding group ride this ride and then come back over here let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought of this attraction all right guys well that is going to wrap it up for my honest review of uh, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. You know, it was the opening day. I 
went back through and watched my POV about five times to try and formulate my thoughts and what I wanted to say for this video. And uh, honestly, I, I, I honestly can't wait to, to write it again. And I will be writing it again on Saturday. I'll be coming back on Saturday to, to ride this attraction with my dad, who is a huge Star Wars fan. And I want to see his reaction to this attraction. And I know he's going to love it. I absolutely know he's going to love it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Share this video with your friends. And, you know, if anyone wants to know more about Rise of the Resistance and what to expect, send them this video and, you know, have them check out the channel. May, they, may, they may like some other videos that I have on this channel. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Leave a comment down below. And let me know what you guys thought of the video. Have you guys ridden Rise of the Resistance? Let me know what you guys thought of the attraction. If you're new around here, please subscribe. Ring that bell. Get notified whenever I upload a new video like this in the future. I hope you are all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, and evening. And I will see you guys in the next video.